Okay, here he goes. 425, he puts that down there. It's a long pause. His head come up. Boom, red lighted. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this guy here, this crazy bald motherfucker, yeah. who's is scary. I mean, he was scary as fuck, you know. I like him. You know, it's like, I like this guy. You know, he's he's kind of like the guy everybody I'm training with is telling me to avoid. But he just helped me win, and I didn't have to work that as hard. A lot of Louis's ideas were spawned from solving issues with his lifters that he had. What problems did you guys have training with Louis, and how did he solve them? And how about yourself and your own training? Well, with Louis and me, again... You're going back to 1976. I did talk to him on the phone, but I was gone. And I, I should know the exact date, but I don't. I'm going to say around 78. So it wasn't really that long. There weren't a whole lot of problems. Uh, we were all young kids. Nobody was really getting hurt. So um, everything was, I don't mean to bore you, but everything was pretty straightforward. Uh, and then... I'm on the phone with him for years. Uh, probably I wore him out on the phone. Uh, that probably ended, in, you know, sometime in maybe 84 or something, I guess, probably 84. But um, I was just so young and so healthy that I don't remember, you know, and my guys weren't really getting hurt. And so I probably missed a lot of ideas because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be calling him with a specific question. And, um, of course, I remember that, you know, the reverse hyper, you know, um, he came up with that machine, but we used to build it in the power rack. <laughs> you know, we put the pins in, we put two boards across, and then a piece of plywood on top of that. You pad it up a little bit, and you tied the weights in between your legs uh, with a real thick belt, and you tied them, and then you jumped up in the power rack, held on, and swung, and you could really swing through. You could also swing all the way up and do like a leg curl. Most people didn't, but Gary Sanger did, and so of course I did because he was the best one down there at the time. So he was doing, he was turning into a leg curl at the top of it and then swinging through. So I, I started doing it like that as well. And um, when I got one of his machines, because you know having little back problems, and he said you got to do these hypers and this and that. I remember getting the machine the first time he gave me one, which was very very nice of him. He gave me the machine, and uh, I didn't even use it. I still built it up in the power rack, but there wasn't. A, Dave would know a lot better than I do because there wasn't a lot of stuff that looked. He was throwing a lot of things at the wall and seeing what would stick. But I was already gone by then. Uh, we didn't throw much at the wall. It was pretty straightforward. What about with you, Dave? There are a couple. I mean, the one I talked about in the West Side documentary, the first one, um, actually the, 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 a funny story because he's, he's talked about how Louis' humor is through the roof. And, you know, I don't think the West Side or the documentary portray, portrayed that enough because he is a funny motherfucker oh, i mean God. he he will pit one of us against another you know unlike doug wasn't part of all that but he was he was a master manipulator yeah. you know at that standpoint but he was also fucking funny as yes. hell um one of my first not first meets but one of my teenage meets um i had a decent bench as a teenager i i i don't know what the hell happened as i got older but it just it was a good bench and I was benching against this dude who had like a ZZ top beard. And it was it was really close. And it was I was two twenty maybe. Might have even been one ninety eight at the time. I'm not too sure, but probably two twenty. And it's I was four hundred and I was gonna go four twenty and this dude was gonna go four twenty five and I'm like, Man, I don't know if I can do four twenty five, you know, everything training wise is and Lou's like, Don't worry about it, just you know, take take the four twenty because this guy's gonna bring the bar down. He's been bringing it higher and higher every attempt. And he's going to bring it down a little bit higher, and it's going to pull his beard. And it's going to lift his head off the bench, and he's going to get red lighted. Guaranteed. And I'm like, this old man. Like, this is this, 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 this is bullshit. This, this ain't going to happen. That's great. And then he says, I've seen it happen dozens of times. I'm like, okay, fuck it. 415. I'm going to, that way I can make sure I win, because I actually I cared about winning back then more than records and stuff like that and I, the guy i go out hit the 415 i'm like okay here he goes 425 he puts that down there it's a long pause his head come up 
boom, red light it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this guy here, this crazy bald motherfucker, yeah. who's is scary. I mean, he was scary as yeah. fuck, you know. Yeah. I like him. You know, it's like, I like this guy. <laughs> you know, he's, he's kind of like the guy everybody I'm training with is telling me to avoid. But he just helped me win, and I didn't have to work that as hard. Yeah. Um, but the... Um, at the Toledo Open meet, I was squatting, and the training cycle went really well. I always had a problem of in the gym, I would always triple more than I could do in a meet. So this time I was determined that I was going to fucking do at the meet what I tripled in the gym. And it was 800, I believe, it's, it's what the number was. It's And it wasn't the first 800 that I've done. And I get there, and the warm-ups are fine. My opener's called high, which it was. It was. It was fucking high. Um, and I was in a battle with Florio at the time, which was very surreal to me because John, you know, R.I.P., you know, helped me a lot as a kid. You know, but him and Louie, man, it's how these guys – I mean, we're, we're in such a cool sport that I'm a 13-, 14-year-old trouble kid, man, and, you know, I'm being – drug around from these meets by people that are police the department head of police departments so these guys really kind of know what they're doing but you know john really probably more so than anybody you know it was like you know do this do this and then i call him and he helped me out go to black seat help me out but well, I'm, I'm in a meet now and we're in the same way class and we're going head to head and i'm like fuck you know it's i might beat this guy you know, he, he missed a squat. He was a big squatter. He missed a squat and he left the door open. I'm like, I'm going to beat this son of a bitch, you know. And But I needed to have that 800. And so the second was, it was there, but it was a bit of a grind. I think it was around 750 or something like that. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to 800. I tripled it. And there's no reason why. In my mind, I could still not figure this out. I did not know why my training was so flawed, you know, until I got to know Louie and explained it years later. I'm like, fuck it. So Louie pulls me aside. He says, let me backspot you. You know, fuck, I don't give a fuck who backspot. Yes. You know, it's, I'm either going to make it or I'm not. You know, it does makes no difference to me as long as their spotter's there. I don't give a fuck. I take it out, walk it out, and I hear him say, you know, push your belly against the belt or something like that. You know, show me how fat you are, belly against the belt, something. But whatever, whatever it was, I pushed as hard as I could against my belt, sat down, it came up like I could have squatted 860. And I'm standing there and blood's running down my forehead because I used to beat my head on the fucking bar. You think, I was nuts too. <laughs> All right, I actually got thrown out of a meet for that. So, oh boy. Yeah, so <laughs> a rule that I didn't know existed, Louie got pissed about that one too. Mm. That's another story. Um, See, so I got good ones too. You ever you ever headbutt the bar and it's bleeding so bad it it sprays on the head judge and oh, then you get thrown out of the meat? Goodness, no, no, I have. That's awesome. And then you walk through around the rest of the day with a knee wrap around your forehead yeah. to, to make sure your blood. Anyhow, <laughs> so I do that. And then I look, you know, I look to Lou and I'm like, "What the fuck? Like, what? Wh what the hell? What? What did you just do? Why, why does this matter?" And he says, "You have to have." air and i'm like i know that and my own people are saying big air big air big air big air he says you're pulling it all in your chest and i'm like well what the fuck else i mean your lungs are where your lungs are at you know what i'm saying you pull air into your lungs you pull air into your lungs and he was like yeah you still have to breathe air into your fucking lungs you idiot he says you need to pull air into your entire torso your your chest your belly your obliques, your lower back. So he's got me in the warm up room and like punching me, you know, and because, you know, it's I'm pushing out and it's like, okay, you got that figured out. Like the front's easy. It's like now, you know, it's like, you know, punches me in the side. I'm like, motherfucker, you like, do it again. And then, you know, it punches me in the side. And it's not so bad. Then he's pushing on my back. So it was, you know, it had that whole 360 thing. Mm -hmm. Then he does this little Louie thing where he's like, here, stick your fingers, you know. In, your, in my obliques and I'm like all right my fuck, I'm gonna jam these in here because you yeah. just punched me in the fucking gut yeah fucker almost he fuck, I, he almost broke my fingers and then years later I saw him in the gym take a doll rod and stick it in his oblique and shoot it across the gym like some way through a spear it's a freaking amazing but um where people misinterpret that just for the listeners out there is you're not just pushing your belly against the belt you're trying to I use the cue with Ted to, to break the belt so it's all the belt's tight all the way around you just can't 
like show people how fat you are. It doesn't work that way unless that cue makes you tight all the way. But that was a, for me, that was a huge sales point. Like, okay, Columbus is now tipping in the scales of where I'm going to go yeah. because I was just told something I didn't know, or I did know, but I didn't know. I really, I, you know what I mean? I didn't know. I didn't know that, yeah, yeah. you know, it was really fucked up. It's like, <laughs> I thought I knew what the hell I was doing and now I'm questioning everything. And then me and John go on, you know, for the meet. It's just a story for the rest of the meet. And we, I beat him by five pounds. And I'm like, yes. And, you know, John comes over, shakes my hand. And, you know, he's very cordial, very nice. But he's got this fucking smirk on his face. And I'm like, <sighs> but what's going on? You know, it's like, you know, is he mad? Because I beat him because, you know, it's, to me it was an honor you know, because yes, right, if right. it wasn't for him, yeah. you know, and Louie, I would not be in a position right. to be able to do that. And I wasn't rubbing it in or anything like that. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know until the meet was over is we were in the 275s. He just missed 242. Oh. He weighed 244. Yeah. I won the weight class. He won best lifter. He won best lifter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he come over to me and he said, I've told you a lot of things. But never forget, I never tell you everything. Oh, that's great. And I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. You know, here I am thinking, man, I got this guy. Gosh. You know, and um, I was mad too. I'm like, yeah. mother, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, I, and I couldn't have pulled another pound. So yeah. there's, yeah. there's no more. That I had nothing. Right. And he had an off day. And I'm like, that son of a bitch did this on purpose yeah. just so he could say that. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, but that was, that was one. The, the other one with Louie, and there's multiple ones with Louie. I could go on for hours and hours and hours, is there became a time in my career where my shoulder after two surgery, it was shoulder after one surgery, pec reattachment came before West Side. So the pec reattachment was a total dislocation, screw it back in type thing. The muscle was all, I mean, that was, the left one was a mess, but this they fixed it so it was that that was fine the right one tore pec major completely pretty much in half so i put a picture on my instagram if anybody looks at it and just you see there's a giant fucking dent there huge um and then my shoulder had one cleanup job you know with spurs and arthritis and torn rotator and all that so i had to find a different way to bench you know because my pecs were not doing anything and when they did, my bench was, it was terrible. So we spent probably 45 minutes on a Tuesday. So it was a, it was a day off. So it was in between, there were, you can kind of say there were no days off, but it was like a lat day. It was an extra workout day. And we spent, oh my God, probably 45 minutes to an hour and a half, just going over every fucking thing that we could go over bar path wise on how I could bench and not use my pecs. I mean, almost physically not use my pecs at all. And it, it meant I could no longer tuck my feet. My feet had to be out in front of me. So I had to drive through the bench, not down into the bench. I had to go to a thumbless grip and a very, very twisted thumbless grip. So not just thumbless, but turned hard so my elbows were already tucked to begin with you know before getting it out having the hand out then tucking more and totally benching and it's probably the straightest line out of anybody that's ever been through west side i can demonstrate it during seminars and i can show a normal bench press and measure it at 14 inches of how most people bench get in my position and shorten it down to three and a half to four inches so that's what we spent the time doing. Then once we had that figured out, then it was, okay, what needs to strengthen to stabilize this groove? Because if you fall out of it, you're fucked. <laughs> and the triceps. I mean, it still, found, it still fell down to the basics. You know, triceps, lats, um, quit doing pec work. You know, that was a big part of it. Quit doing pec work. Quit doing anything that's going to strain it. Get everything on the triceps. So it was, that was probably one of the more in-depth technical 
conversations that I had because we had to find a way to make this better. And we did. And I ended up benching um, right after the meet. Right after that, I hit a 585 with the best being a 545. So that was like an immediate difference. Then went into the sixes and started to have problems with the elbows flaring and stuff like that. So it started to creep back a little bit again. And um, But without that, it never went away it never would have went up. You know, it would have stayed where it where it was. Um, I can give others I came from the mud There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law